now it works. Good morning. Um, unfortunately, I cannot give this talk in Portuguese because I cannot speak the language. So I try to get the most of every talk and I use Google Translate sometime. So it's fun for me. I hope it's fun for you now. The, the, the next 30 minutes, I do my very best. Um, and I would like to talk about a little bit of decision making, how to make good and difficult decisions. So whenever you have a question and we have the time, please ask it or use the time after the talk. Um, just a short introduction of myself. My name is Bernd Erk. In, in Germany, it's like Bernd. Um, I'm CEO of a, of a company named Netways. I'm also co-founder of a monitoring project named Isinga. Um, and I'm also heavily involved in the DevOps Days core organization, which we support all those local DevOps Days. And you can find me on Twitter using GetHash if you want to. So what is my company doing? We are doing open source services and support in Germany and focused on open source and data center, mainly monitoring, automation, storage, and, and stuff like that. And we are based in Nuremberg, Germany. That is here. Um, Nuremberg is in the north of Bavaria, but it's not that part of Bavaria. <laughs> OK? So we have that, but we have to drive to see that. Um, yeah, and about Isinga, I don't know if anybody has heard about Isinga, the monitoring thing. OK, there is room for improvement. Um, Isinga started like nine years ago as a fork of Nagios which is not the same code base anymore. We have Isinga 2, which is rewritten um, from scratch and use a totally different concept as well. Um, yeah, look it up. It's Isinga.com is, is the website. And, and if you have any question related to that as well, um, feel free to get in touch with me. OK, so why is this topic important? So why I'm, I'm giving a talk about these decision-making things. So I'm coming out of tech. I started my tech thing like, I don't know, 20, 22 years ago, started with Solaris at the time and came out from the technical things. Nowadays, I'm not so much involved in the technical process anymore because the people in my company don't give me access, um, which is a good thing, I guess. So I spend more time how to can we improve in our organization or especially how can improve myself um, to make better decisions, work with people, and, and how can we come forward. And this is probably the reason why I spend more and more time on, on why we're doing something, how can we improve, why are going to the same trap again and again, and how can we prevent this. So what do you think? How many decisions do we make in an average day? Somebody can make a guess. And it's, I'm not talking about like an active decision, so it's always like every decision we make, perhaps thinking about it or just happening. So wake up, 2000? It's much more. That's very good. It's about 35,000 decisions we make every day, which means it's about everything, which bus we take, what we believe, what we eat, um, what we watch on Netflix. So everything. Some decisions we not think about, some we, we really think about more. Um, only about food. We have about 225 decisions a day. Sometimes not the best decisions. Um, but it's an important topic for us, right? So it, it stresses us out and we spend a lot of time and a lot of resources in our brain making decisions even if we, if we don't notice it at the time. And to make a decision means you have to make choices between different things, right? If you would like to go for something, you have to decide what you, what you want to do. And an important thing is that there are easy choices and hard choices, which is a, a very important fact if you think about how much energy is consuming, um, if you have to make a hard and easy decision. So an easy, an easy choice, there's one alternative, perhaps for you, is the clearly better one. So it's, it's, it's no hassle, it immediately comes to your brain what you should do. For example, um, if you would like to go for an apple or for a donut. It depends on your life phase, if you are on a diet, perhaps you would like to have the donut, but you need eat the apple, whatever you're into, it's, it's a pretty easy choice if you're standing in front of a buffet, what you would like to eat, right? Of course, you can have a combination for that, but it's not the healthy part. Um, and in a hard choice, the thing is that there are advantages and disadvantages in different perspectives, though there's no clear better choice. So you have um, different aspects on a decision and you have to, you have to separate them. So there is no best choice. You have 
Um, and I go to that example because I think it explains a little bit better what I would like to say. So for that example is if you're looking for a new job, right? Um, and then you can decide going for a smaller company or a big company. So in one company you get more money. On the other hand, you can perhaps work remotely. Um, you have a family atmosphere in the smaller company. So they are different. They are different things you should take into account. And then there is no clear favorite for you. Perhaps you say, okay, more money is, is my key fact for me to go for the bigger company. Um, but if you take remote work, for, for example, as an aspect which can also involve your decidement, um, it, it balances out in kind of way. Because then the question is, okay, if you're struggling, should I go for a smaller or bigger company? And you get, I don't know, whatever, $50,000 a year in, this, in the bigger company. And you're still tending, okay, but remote work is cool as well. And then the bigger company says, okay, I give you $5,000 more. Then if it's kind of a mathematical comparison, it should be clear that you tend for the bigger company, right? But still, um, the decision is not easier through that process because it's not balanced out. It has different aspects. So if a technical comparison like less, more, or equal, if it does not work, so if there is no clear thing for you, it's a hard decision. So how to make good choices? And definitely I'm not saying that I'm really good in it. I try to improve. Um, yeah, hard choices are hard. Um, and I would like to tell a little bit what you can do. First of all, avoid stress. Because under stress, your fight or flight mode is activated. I don't know if somebody heard of that concept, fight or flight mode. Um, so what happens? Um, your body releases cortisol and this probably blocks your prefrontal cortex here. And it kind of creates a fog, which is the same thing if you, if you don't sleep enough, if you consume too much coffee, if you have alcohol. Most of you have gone through this, that then you make stupid things. And there is a small border between it's having fun and then you make super stupid things. Um, under stress, it's very hard to leave the comfort zone. Especially, take that into account, if you, if you work with people and you put them under fire, if you put them under stress, it's very hard for them to get out of their comfort zone. So if you would like to, I don't know, let's say move people, change them, try to convince them that there are other ways perhaps better ways, but let's first of all say other ways. You don't have to put them under stress, because if you do it for them, it's even harder. They, they stuck with their current situation, and for them it's very hard to, to leave it and, and think different. Another thing is prevent decision fatigue. Decision fatigue um, is nothing more than your brain is like a muscle. We have kind of a limited amount of decisions, good decisions we can make on every day. Um, there's an interesting thing, I hope I can explain it correctly. It's a, it's an, a guy from Israel, Shay Dancing is his name. He made some um, studies on proportion court. And what you can see is the timeline during the day a proportion judge makes if somebody comes out, out of jail, right? And after breakfast, after lunch, after his coffee break, he tends much more to say, okay, proportion approved. So for him, it's much, much easier for judges in general to go away from the standard decision to going for a pro and after they're going more, ex more exhausted you can see the line is going down after time they stay with the status quo and say okay and you're staying in jail does it make sense hopefully it means if you're in jail and you go to the judge before his lunch break it doesn't look good for you not very promising um, there are a lot of interesting studies from here that name Shadan Singer. It's also written on the slides and I guess it, it will be shared or I put it on SlideShare somewhere. Um, if you're interested in that, it's, 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 interesting. It's, it's very interesting, but it's also very scaring what people do and you think you, they have a good day. Another thing is avoiding perfection because there's no perfect solution. Um, have somebody heard of the magical number seven? Somebody heard of that concept? Um, it's, a, it's a concept um, from George Miller. It's, it's about like 70, yeah, I would say 70 years old, 9046. And the number 47 is the number of information you can keep in your short-time memory. 
So you can deal with about seven information, seven numbers, seven colors, seven things you see and you would like to memorize them. Some people can work with eight, some people can work with six, but the interesting thing is that you cannot improve it. So you cannot improve that on that, on that number you can work in your short time memory. So it's given by birth and that's your limit. Which means if you would like to take multiple informations into account, it doesn't make sense to have 20 different opinions in front of you, different, 20 different decisions, because you cannot handle it. Bad things can happen while you're aiming for perfection. So especially in our, in our segment, in our area, if you sometimes wait too long, if you're looking too long and striving too long for the perfect selection, the tool you would like to go with doesn't exist anymore. Right? So it's always important to say, okay, I do as best as I can with a suitable amount of information and then do something. And another thing is people who are aiming for perfection and people invest a lot of time making the best decision and have a very big stress blowout if it doesn't work out. So if you spend a lot of time in, in, in try to make the best decision and then it didn't work out, then you are super stressed and you have a very negative influence and it needs a couple of hours, days, depending on your capabilities to go over it. But I think it makes sense in some way. If you spend more time to do something and then it fails, you are frustrated in some way. And people who are quick in making a new decision, they are over it in, in an hour or in a couple of minutes. Biases, which is, I think, a very important thing. I would like to do a test with you. Um, please do it only for you, so don't say it, only do it for you, and I hope it works. So why do you think? Do you have an idea why perhaps you think you have chosen number seven, but you really did not? So the, it's a pretty simple one. Probably first of all, because of that thing, your brain is in, in math mode, because I gave you a couple of things to do and your brain thinks it, it tries to do a minus or add. And then if I go back and say I go think between a number of 12 and 5, the, what your brain does is like 12 minus 5 which ends up into seven. Even if I think pick a random number, what your brain does because you did like six or seven answers and questions before, you're just like, okay, 12 minus five. And the word hurry up quickly stresses you out. I have given this talk a couple of times with different results. Sometimes I would say like 70% went up with a seven, sometimes like two people went up and said, oh, it doesn't work. Um, depends also on the time of the day. And uh, now you're really fresh, which is bad. In that kind, if you do it in the afternoon, you have a much, much higher rate that people go for the seven. Because their brain is exhausted, it's like, yeah, whatever. So they really don't think about it. So they believe they ch have chosen a number, but they have not. So their brain says, okay, let's do like 12 minus five, seven is okay, it's your random number. Okay, let's go to a, to a couple of biases. Biases, there are about 55, 60 out there. Um, I would like, to go to a couple of them, which I think they are very interesting um, for your day-to-day -day job, also for private life, um, and would like to, to talk about them a little bit. So the first one I have is the self-serving bias. What does it mean? Um, it means like that we do everything to maintain our self-esteem. And that results is that we usually tend to reflect success on ourselves and failures on others. That's a typical thing we do and that it's not, I would say, perhaps it's not nice, but this is our usually behavior because we try to enhance our self-esteem, which is, which is important um, for us. What's going on now? Um, important thing is that you create a good culture of failure, right? That in your company, if, if people 
if something did, doesn't work out, if people have a failure that they don't be afraid to shout out and say, it's wrong, I don't know what to do, please can help me. Because otherwise people will exactly do that and blame others and don't reflect their own failures or yeah, things they have done to other people. Get older, um, usually not a good thing, but sometimes a good thing because if you're getting older, it's much easier for the average person to say, I don't know, I don't know how to do it, it was my mistake. So if you are getting older, it's easier for you to reflect and also because you, you kind of created your self-esteem, you, you know where you are, what you can, what your experience is, it's much, much easier. So for younger people, um, reflecting errors on their self and not on others is much, much harder because they are still growing, they still have to learn. I don't know what young and old means. Um, I would say that physiologically, 25 is our, our prime time. If we are 25 years old, apart from that, it's going down, right? Sorry. Um, <laughs> but of course, you can, you can still learn, you, you improve, you have your wisdom, you have your experience. Um, but I think depending on how much you use your brain, with about 30, 32, you have the, from brain-wise, you reach your limits and you have probably the maximum capacity. And from there, it's just a question on how much you use your brain muscle to keep it on a specific limit. Because otherwise, uh, you will not be as good using it anymore. So it's an, I think it's an interesting fact to think about yourself and say, okay, where I am in life? Um, did I already cross the border? Um, but of course, you can keep up on a high level if you, if you use your brain. Another thing is um, confirmation bias. What does it mean? So we usually, um, if you're looking for something, if you try to make a decision, if you look for something, we, we're looking for a, a confirmation of something, right? So what does it mean? Um, let's say you're looking for, for your tool, for your whatever, cloud, cloud provider, for your on-premise tool, whatever, and you go to Google, you look usually for something like how does it work, success stories, all the things. But um, if you, I don't know, already said I would like to go with Kubernetes, for example, you're looking for stories which gives you the confirmation that this is a good choice. You usually don't start at Google like, why Kubernetes sucks. This is what you don't do. But this is what you should do. Because at the time where you think, what should I do, you already made the decision, right? If you say, look, should I know for, I don't know, Open Ebola or Kubernetes or whatever makes sense for you. At that point, we are looking for confirmation out there with colleagues, with friends, with Google. You already made your decision. You're just looking for more and more backing up your decision. But you don't really look for, for the opposite, perhaps for bad stories on that. So a good thing is try to make friends, which is always a good thing to make friends. Um, but having good friends, and, and also I would say a friend is much more than a colleague or a teammate. It could be the same person, of course. Um, they not always tend to confirm you. They always will, perhaps there's a much, much higher chance that they say, hey, you're on the wrong path. So have a look on it from the other side. You're, you're just going wrong. Watch out for the opposite. So if you tend to do something, look absolutely for the other, for the opposite thing. Also on Google, it helps a lot. Try that out. Um, if you, perhaps the next time, if you can remember one thing out of the talk in a week and you Google for something which you're looking for an improvement, for a confirmation, and then memorize, oh, holy, holy moly, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just searching for an improvement, for a commitment of my own thing. And there's an interesting quote from Charlie Munger, which is, I don't know, not a lot of people know it. I, I also don't know him for a long time, which is the business partner of Warren Buffett. Um, he said, invert, always invert. So always see it from the other side. If you, if you don't know what makes you happy, try to figure out what makes you unhappy. Um, if you don't know what brings you there, figure out what prevents you from bringing you there. Sometimes it's much, much easier to get the other perspective um, to see clearly and see your path. Cognitive fluency is also an interesting concept. Um, because our brain is misattributing the sensation of yeast with, um, with the thing itself. What does it mean? Um, an interesting example, they, they show test groups name of food additives, right? 
all of the food additives don't exist. So it's just names they invented. If the names are hard to spell, hard to say, people think and tend that these food additives, is, they are much, much more harm for your body. If they sound good, people say, I think it's good. People think if it sounds fluid, then it doesn't harm you. Um, there are a couple of studies out there. Food additives are a very interesting thing. I, I read an article about that. They, they invented about 40 food additives, none of them existing out there. And the good sounding, good naming food additives, people always said, they don't harm me. They are good. And every, every one of them does not exist. So if it sounds too good, looks too good, be careful. Suncust buys. Somebody has heard of them? It's, it's my favorite. Um, we want to make an investment worth a while. I'll give you an example. You go to the cinema, you buy a ticket, you go to the movie. After 10 minutes, you figure out that movie is just crap. What are you doing? You stay in the movie because then I bought the ticket. Right? That's wrong. Because you don't get the money back anyway, but you waste two hours of your life staying in that movie. So it's much, much better because the money is already gone. Just go out, say, okay, that movie was shit. I go for dinner. Um, but this is not how we behave, right? Because we would like to, we are attached to it. We say, I bought the ticket. I go through the shitty movie because I pay $10 for the ticket. It doesn't make sense anymore. Um, we do the same with relationships. At some point in life, perhaps the relationship is not good anymore. But then we say, okay, we had such, such a good time. We traveled so much. We discovered so many things together. That's not an argument staying together. It's an argument staying together because the relationship is okay or good or there's room for improvement, but not because it was good. But this is how a lot of people behave, that they stay with the status quo because they think, I invested so much time in that. I'd invested so much time in that relationship. My job is not good, but I, I'm there for 10 years and I invested so much time in that whatever setup. So really it's an important thing in, in private life and personal life, always reflect the status quo. Because we fear feeling and, and looking foolish to others and also to ourselves. So we fear looking foolish to ourselves and that it, it was a mistake because then we're coming back to that confirmation base, right? That we want to be right. That's our inner thing, that we want to be right in something. So always focus on future invests and costs. Um, private life costs is always not the right argument. But, but what happens in the past? If you're going on a path at work for, for five years or for like five months because nobody's doing something for five years nowadays in our industry. Um, so always look, okay, where I am right now? And don't look back the five years you invested in a tool. So look, this is the status quo today. What would I do? Does it make sense anymore? Should I look for something else? So always evaluate the status quo. It just was another option. So always try. Perhaps it's in private life, it's much harder. I, I agree to that. Always try to start if, from that point where you're now, if going that way is just another option and you can decide to do something else. Um, and I think a lot of is going wrong about because of that sunk cost bias. So many of you will have that case in work that people stuck with the solution because they invested so much time or stuck with decisions they made uh, years ago and they, it's hard for them to say, okay, I was wrong, move forward. So recap it a little bit. Be aware of biases. Um, there are many, many interesting books out there. Um, there's a, a really cool book if it's um, Slow Thinking, Fast Thinking. It's from a guy named Kahneman. It's, um, it's very good to read, I think. Um, so please don't go away from decision making. I know that there are people out there, for them it's hard to make a decision. But if you don't do it, others will do it for you. So see it always as a chance to decide for something. Always keep in mind that it could be a failure, of course, but you can change it. Make a decision and change it as often as required. Um, especially in a working environment, sometimes it's hard for, for managers to they make a decision and a week later they come up with the idea that the decision they have made is not the best one. 
and for a lot of people it's very hard to stay up in front of their team, in front of their people say, I was wrong. Or things have changed, we have to do something else. Um, Jeff Banzers from Amazon, which I'm not saying that this is a good guy in general, but he had these, he, he, he's fighting for that concept of change as often as required and, and communicate it, explain people. So it's, it's no problem if you tell your teammates, if you tell your coworkers, I do it differently if you explain them why you did that. So for people, it's always hard if, if the decision-making process or their management is kind of a moving target because they do different things every day. Uh, but mostly the pro problem is not because they're doing it, the problem is because they're not explaining it. They, they don't explain why we are changing our opinion on a specific topic because there are new information we have and now we have to adjust our previous decisions. Sometimes there is just no best option. There is no best option to make for a good decision. But then we have a super good talent that we can create our own reason. So we can figure out, if we don't know what to do, we create our own reason why we should do something. And coming back to the job example where you have perhaps different advantages and disadvantages and different opinions, at the end you can say, remote work for me is the thing to do because I would sit in the and my country house with my dog and my kids running around. I don't care about the more money I can get. So what do I want? Even if it's perhaps not the best choice, but you can create your, your own reason for a choice. And so hard decisions are, are uh, changes for us to, to get more experience, to decide what we want to be, how we can work with our employees, what kind of culture we would like to have in our company, what like of um, of relationship we want to have. So even sometimes it's hard to make the best one. But if it's your one, and if it's the one backing your, your inner person, then I would say that's a decision you should go for. Mucho obrigado. Thank you very much.